have a special guest tonight, the truth seeker, uh, Derek. Um, Derek, give me your last name. Gross. Gross Kurth. Gross Kurth. Gross Kurth. Yeah. Gross Kurth. Okay. Because I've actually said it a couple different ways. But anyway, uh, Gross Kurth. I love what you've been doing. We've been uh, following you a little bit, looking at some of the stuff. I think Berlin's actually followed more of your stuff than I have, but uh, uh, you've got a unique ministry. And so we're going to jump in at the top of the hour. So until then, um, I'm going to have Berlin share a little bit about the Spirit Centered Business project that we have coming up. And uh, we'll be right back in about two minutes. So, oh, Berlin, yeah. Anyway. Um, we're going to have him turn off his video or no, it's no, this no, is good. Fine. Yeah, this is good. Like this. All yeah. right. Perfect. I'm also sharing. So um, for those of you who are on the replay viewers, please share it to your group as well. So Gil and I just started the spirit centered business and we're picking it up from when I started it years ago. And we are doing a free training called the spirit, three spiritual keys to unlocking your business potential. And those keys we're going to dive into and unpack our alignment, access, and impact. And we uh, we already did one of them last week. It was really good. We had several people on. And then we are doing another one tomorrow, Tuesday, April 2nd at 5 p.m. And then one on Thursday, April 4th at 2 p.m. So you're welcome to uh, join us for those. We, you can go to – can you switch that slide with the uh, – the spiritcenteredbusiness.com forward slash three keys. There you go. That's where you go to, to register and make sure that you get the link to be able to join us on this free webinar. And um, it, we do have some, some really good training and we're going to be telling some testimonies of how the spirit centered business has worked in our business and our lives and our, with our clients. So it's going to be a really good training. So with that, um, Gil, we have one minute or less than a minute before we take uh, put uh, Derek back on. So I'm going to make sure that I'm sharing here. Yeah, and I just we, encourage everybody to go ahead and start sharing this if you haven't yeah. started already. Right. Get a few minutes to get that going because uh, I, Derek has definitely got a, a gift in, in sharing with a a group of people that a lot of us, um, you know, aren't really sharing with right now. So uh, let's go ahead and just get started. I'm going to jump in here. So yeah, well, I'm going to type for a second. I, I just want, right, I really want to say that I'm looking for looking forward to the wild ride with Derek. So <laughs> 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 just type that. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everybody. We're glad you're here. Um, we have tonight Derek Grosskirth, and he is the truth seeker. He has a. a um, a Facebook site, as well as a YouTube site, which I was looking at that. You almost have 10,000 subscribers on there now. Just hit it yesterday. <laughs> Just did. All right. How oh, you? wow. Congratulations. Very cool. Yeah, congratulations. So, um, Derek, you know, I'm just excited to, to see and to hear what you're going to share because, um, you know, we normally are, are focused on people who have come out of the church box and uh, into the, the heavenlies. And, and uh, you've actually had a little bit different journey. So uh, why don't you go ahead and start sharing a little bit of your, your testimony with us? Because I'm, I'm excited to hear about it. Uh, and I think some others are going to be able to share your testimony with other people to help them get to where you're at in the spirit. So go ahead. Awesome. Great. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on the, uh, the show here. So I'm excited to be here, share my story with everyone. So um, I come out of witchcraft and the occult um, as a, a, a child having supernatural encounters and uh you know waking up in in the uh, middle of the night with beings pinning me to the bed and different experiences like that kind of set me on this uh journey of, of of seeking truth of seeking uh you know what was real on the other side and so even as a kid I, I remember having those experiences and it leading me to uh, movies and and things like that that talked about the supernatural the paranormal um things like that so I started you know, listening to um, music and stuff like that, that was really dark or just kind of themed with with that kind of stuff as a teenager and um, just started studying, get, uh, getting into witchcraft books and uh, Wicca and the occult and Satanism and just started studying, studying as much as I could and uh, ended up meeting a warlock who uh, took me a, a little bit further in, in teaching us spells and incantations and how to, uh, you know, deal with other spirits and stuff like that. So this is when I was a teenager 
Um, yeah, I was going to ask, how old were you when you you started into yeah. that? This was probably like when I got when I started getting trying to take it serious, I would say uh, 13. I was just a teenager. Um, but I, I had my first encounter with, with spirits when I was like four years old. So the first encounter was when I was, you know, what I'm saying really young. So it shaped my life. But uh started, you know, researching all that stuff and dealing with with the occult. And I had, you know, my warlock friend who taught us all this kind of stuff and um, really, really got to a place I didn't want to be because um, I was opening up. Uh, portals to the other side and uh, going in and out of trances um, just by watching television. And it was something that I I couldn't control. We'd just be watching television and be sucked into some type of portal. And then I would see all types of spirits flying around and it would be speaking different languages and I couldn't understand them, couldn't make them out. They looked like shapes and colors and silhouettes and things like that. And it was scary. Um, and I would just be sucked back into my body and my heart would be uh, beating and uh, my skin would be pale and I'd be just in tears because I couldn't breathe in that state. And um, that happened to me a bunch and um, started, uh, you know, getting real sick in my body, coughing up blood and, um, you know, having all these crazy things going on and ended up, you know, getting possessed by these spirits. Um, I did it. I was just opening up my mind to any types of entities that wanted to come through and just really use my body as a vessel. And, uh, and they did. It wasn't like instant. It was maybe over a couple of weeks and then they kind of seemed like they all came through at one time and it was something that I couldn't control. So, I mean, there's a bunch of stories in and out of that, but really get to the meat of it. Uh, was it was at this place that I didn't want to be uh, going schizophrenic, um, c- didn't have control of my own mind. These spirits were giving me thoughts and speaking to me. And there was a hypochondria spirit that came with it, that every uh, ailment that I heard on television, uh, brain cancer, testicular cancer, whatever it was. I immediately believed that I had it and it was this overwhelming belief that it was mine and um, really crazy. So a couple of years before that, I had, I had been saved. I got, got into church and, and got, got born again at a prayer meeting filled with the, uh, the fire of the Holy spirit upon confessing my sins to the, to the Lord and asking Jesus to come into my life and forgive me of my sins. And so in this place of torment, I remember where I was in that peace of Christ that I had in my life. So um, I knew I needed to give everything up to, to have that peace in my life again. And um, September 7th of the year 2000, I uh, asked Christ to come back into my life and forgive me of all the witchcraft and all the pagan stuff that I was into. And uh, he came in and he, you know, forgave me of my sins again and cleansed me. And I I got rid of all my idols, all of my statues, the clothing, t-shirts, CDs, all of that kind of stuff. I threw everything away, dedicated my heart to following Christ uh, again in uh, September 7th of 2000. So, there's a long journey in and out of that of demons and spells and schizophrenia and all types of crazy stuff that's in and out of that. But uh, that's my testimony in a nutshell. That was, wow. that was definitely a nutshell. I, <laughs> I know you got a lot more. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But that is such a traumatic, I, I just can't even imagine that. You know, um, getting sucked through a portal while watching TV I mean, how was the mechanics of that? How does that oh, happen? Man. You know what? I don't know if you guys were in, into movies, especially in the 90s, but there was a movie that kind of personified this because it, it almost like brought me back into it. It was a movie called The Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon. And uh, he was able to receive messages from a ghost that would pull him in and out of this trance. And the trance state that he would go in was very similar because his body would turn pale and he would turn blue and get really cold. And the spirit would speak to him and try to communicate messages to him. And then he would come back and gasp for breath. And it was, it, it was a lot like that. So um, I couldn't, couldn't make out any, any messages, you know, that was coming through. It, it felt like it was in foreign languages and then they were all speaking at once. So it wasn't like one person or one spirit trying to communicate. It was a whole bunch and it was, you know, a little bit more than I could handle. And, uh, you know, it was actually driving me mad, driving me schizophrenic because they would try to communicate with me in the grocery stores and, um, but it was demonic. It wasn't fun. It wasn't good. Uh, it wasn't this light and love stuff that we hear in the spiritual circles. It was definitely demonic. Wow. So, you know, one of the things that I, I just want to say to, you know, the people that are listening, I mean, if you've ever had any question about whether there's any power and authority in that realm, even on the demonic side, I mean, I think you would be able to testify that, yeah, there is, there is power, there is authority there. It's just, it's not the fullness 
and it's not the light side. What, what would you just say about any of, any of that when, if someone were asking you that question? Is there really any power or authority in that stuff? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's definitely power there, um, but it comes with a, uh, it comes with a cost. It comes with a sacrifice. Like whenever you are trying to make packs with the other side, these lesser um, demons or entities or spirits, they want something in return. They want you to do something to commemorate them. They want a piece of, uh, you know, they, they want your blood. They want your, an article of clothing, something that you give them some type of physical representation on this side of the spirit realm. So they want something. And what a lot of people don't know is so the part, part of the thing that they want is a piece of your mind. They want to live within your psyche. And that's what the, when the scripture is talking about, that these demon spirits are strongholds, they're thought forms that live within the mind, ungodly beliefs and things like that. So that's where a lot of this mental, um, mental illness, sicknesses and things come from like that, because these entities are pretty much riding you as a host and feeding off of your, your, uh, your, your energy, your auric field. And uh, yeah, they want to exist on this side of eternity. Hmm. So what do you say to people who are, you know, just so loving and so, you know, working with their angel cards and, you know, they've got their crystals and they're, they're just so kind and, you know, everything is all about love. What do you say to those people? Because sometimes they're more good or kind, loving or whatever than some of the Christians you meet. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a, there's a weird balance there that we have to find. And I've been, you know, just kind of thinking about it lately. Like I think a lot of, you know, the reasons that people are focusing on light and love, most of those people come from some type of traumatic childhood, some type of traumatic abusive situation. And they understand that the darkness is real and they don't want to feed into it. So whether they're in this place where they just uh, uh, almost act like it doesn't exist or now that they have seen the marvelous light of Christ or whatever, they don't even want to kind of, you know, give foothold to the enemy because there's like this weird balance you have to walk because you have even in, in, in the Christian realm, these people who are just like heresy hunters and demon hunters, and they're pointing out evil in everything and they mm -hmm. can't see the good at all. They can only see the evil in things. And then you have people on the other side who only see the good in things. So it, it, it really consists of a balance um, that you have to be careful with dealing with the other side, but at the same time, not uh, stifle exploration to where you know, there's a big thing in, in the church realm that people think that if you meditate, you're going to get demonically possessed or something like that. So anything that resembles spirituality that's not from traditional Christianity, which we've learned coming up, they think it's demonic. So there really is a balance there. But I, I do think that that a lot of people just cling to just being a light worker, being a healer, those type of things, because they've dealt with that stuff. And, um, you know, they don't want to focus on I have to look at my life, too. Like, why am I? focusing now on, you know what I'm saying, most of the, the beautiful things in, in life and versus pointing out the devils and the demons behind every corner, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And I think it's because that, you know, it's the scriptures tells us, it says to, uh, if there be anything good, if there be anything virtuous, anything noble of good report, think on these things. Cause you can get to a place where you're not really spiritual. You're more superstitious. You're afraid of the black cat. You're afraid of your own shadow. And there's a lot of superstitious people in the church who claim to be spiritual, but it's, you know, far from it. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got um, a depth in this other side that most people don't have. And as you just said, most Christians are completely afraid to even go there uh, because, you know, the, it, it's just like the church has taught us that if, if the enemy is using it in any way, shape or form, yeah. then you just need to stay completely away from it. And we've done that so much that we basically pushed away uh, the power and authority that God has given to us just because the enemy has tapped into it and started using it. Because, you know, the enemy cannot create anything. He cannot. There, there's no power or authority that he has on his own. So it's just simply a manipulation and a distortion of the things that God has given. So how do you see yourself um, or maybe anybody else that you're working with? going into some of those realms and and taking back from the enemy what he's stolen and, and abused and misused and bringing that back into the kingdom is there yeah i mean that's a ton i mean i think that's that's 
that's like, you know, the basis of my ministry that the Lord's given me is, is pretty much taken back what the enemy is stolen. He's stolen a lot, you know? And so, especially when it comes to spiritual giftings and all the cool stuff, all the fun stuff, like yeah. we have a piece of it in the church realm. You know, we, you know, even if I think, I think they've abandoned the terms, even in charismatic Christianity or, you know, the Bethel, you know, uh, church stuff or whatever, the, the, you know what I'm saying? The real spiritual side of, of Christianity is still kind of giving up the terms and things like that, whether we're talking about going into trance state, meditation, uh, you, you know, being caught up into the, you know what I'm saying, third heaven or whatever the case is. Yeah. So they've kind of given that stuff up to the occult, to the new age when it comes to, you know, yeah. energy healing and, and faith healing and a lot of those things. And so when, when I study a lot of this stuff, I really think that, um, um, uh, that, there's people all over the world that we're talking about the same thing, but we're just approaching it from a different perspective and we have different names and some people are really good at speaking Christianese and they have the Christian terms for it, but you're going to, you, you know, you're going to kind of, you know, run into a brick wall there because the scripture a, a lot of times just gives you an overview. If there's an overview, there's no like, okay, this is how the training is. You know, then when the scripture says that the spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophet, you're going to have to talk to a prophet about some of those things that go on in your mind, in the spirit, when you're feeling these impressions in your body, when you walk into Walmart and all of a sudden your heart is starting to skip beats or you can feel the spirit of heaviness on you. You know, th it, that's not really I mean, there's overviews of it, but it doesn't go into detail how we tap into this stuff. So when it comes to a, lo a lot of people in the spiritual movement, they are explaining our spiritual giftings as children of God in, a, in you know, way better detail than, a, you know, the a majority in, in Christendom, man. So I yeah. think we're talking about the same thing, but because all these are giftings and all these are tools, the Bible says yeah. that the gifts are without repentance. You can operate in these tools and abilities that the Lord has given us, but um, it, it's about the, the, the spirit that you approach it in and the intention of the heart that you approach with that tool. That's, That's good. really good. Uh, so what are, what would be some of the things that you would um, say that the church really needs to be taking back from the enemy that uh, and then and then even maybe in that as you're talking about it, um, what would be some of the language that the church could use versus um, some of the language that, you know, you know, some are going to be stretched yeah. by this because I'll Absolutely. just be, you know, we, we talked about this. You sent something over to be posted on, um, on, uh, yeah. you know, the Ecclesia Rising. And, and I, I talked to you about it. I was like, uh, I don't know if the people here are quite ready for that yet. Cause I mean, you're, you're unapologetic. Yeah. And I really, really appreciate that about you because you, you're just doing what God's given you to do and you're not trying to pull any punches. And, and so that, you know, what you sent over was talking about chakras and so forth. And I, and I know that some of the people here are going to be fine with it. Other people are going to be freaked out that we would even talk about it. So what are some of those things that we need to be reaching into the enemy's territory to bring back into the kingdom because it doesn't belong to the enemy in the first place? And what might be some of the language that we need to use in order to, I don't know, make some Christian, make the Christian community feel a little bit more comfortable. And, and okay. again, you're unapologetic. Yeah. You might not even be worried about that. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, but our our platform, the, we have to, we're trying to, you know, awaken people to this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we don't want to scare them away. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, I'll, I'll say this because there's a lot of people, even you, you know, they, they look at what I do and, and a lot of people, they, oh, I want to do it. I wish I can do it. Let me go into it. They pray about it. They feel like the Lord's called them. They don't know where to begin. Um, it def this isn't for everybody. It comes with a great price. Uh, you have to be protective over the anointing and in and, and your life and your your devotion and all this kind of stuff. It's not easy. I don't think any ministry is easy, but this is not just, you know, it's something spur of the moment or whatever. Um, but when it comes to reaching the church crowd and what you say, what language we should use, um, the truth is, whether you want to say it's the sad truth, it's just the truth. You have to use biblical language. Like you're saying, you can't talk, you can't use anything outside of the Bible. They're going to run. So you, oh, have to be, makes me mad. Have to be, you have to be able to break the scriptures down, which I, I, I'm enamored with all these other terminologies and stuff. So now as a believer walking in spiritual giftings and being able to tear the Bible apart like I do, and I know the biblical references, I can look at stuff in the spiritual circles and say, oh, 
they're talking about speaking in tongues. Oh, downloads. Yeah, we get downloads. It's called a quickening in the Bible. <laughs> and so you see some ministries and some people starting to be a little bit uh, open with their terminology, but you can't go too far. And I'll just, uh, you know, I mean, and I don't even, I'm trying to just kind of, you know what I'm saying, broaden myself a little bit too, because I don't want to, um, I don't want to scare anybody. And then I don't want to uh, open up any doors that people aren't ready for either. You know, and that's that's one thing with the yeah. ministry that the Lord's given me that I have to be a steward over. And there's some fear that comes in or maybe even with you guys. OK, if you have Derek, if you have True Seek on your podcast, people may get into astral travel. They may get into this kind of stuff and start looking into other philosophies or other teachers or other speakers. And so there's this this weird you know notion that comes to you to you got to you got to guard the flock. You have to be a protective of the platform and things like that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it comes with just trusting uh, what God has uh, planned out for that person's life. And that, that if it's real, that, you know, he, he, he's, um, you know, he, he can, he can save them. He can lead them to what they're supposed to be into. I yeah. mean, cause we look at that with the new age stuff. Cause it's like black and white, right? Bible, new age, whatever. But it's the same thing within, within church doctrine as well. If we talk about, you know, some obscure thing in the Bible, then they run to some type of minister that uh, is way left or way right, or let's get into Calvinism. Let's shut the spiritual giftings down just because I shared a quote from John MacArthur, who's got some great quotes and some great teachings, but someone can get into some of his teachings and, and grieve the Holy spirit and shut that stuff down. So there's this trust issue that, um, that we have to, you know, trust God that he knows what he's doing in our lives. And he, he led us to information and to reasoning and to the scriptures mm -hmm. and whatever teachings that kind of complement the Bible, because the Bible at the end of the day is the plumb line. We have to filter everything through it. So it's good to have your Christianese on point. It's good to have your Bible on point. So all of these other philosophies, and there are many that, that like to creep in, we have to be careful uh, we filter all of that stuff through the Bible. And at the end of the day, whatever is built upon the foundation of Christ, the foundation of love, and it stands at the end of the day, then we can we can break it down a little bit further. Mm -hmm. That is so good. That's a really good way to find the truth. Do you have um, a good way that something will put up a red flag that it's the counterfeit if someone is going and exploring? Good question. Definitely. And that, you know, and this is kind of weird because I come from a background of being able to prove things in the scriptures and, and to take line upon line, precept of precept and some different sects that really teach you how to break the Bible down. So we want to prove everything, but a lot of times that proving with the moving with the unction and quickening of the Holy spirit, you just have to go off of that sixth sense, the, the being able to listen to his voice. And so I've explored a lot of text. I'm open to a lot of text. I really enjoy texts that were taken out of the Bible or some of the uh, books like the book of Enoch and like the early church fathers had. I love that stuff. And so yeah. there's other books, the Gnostic scriptures, which a lot of people get into early on their head over heels for a lot of that stuff I read. And even though there's some beautiful quotes, I don't think it's inspired. It's the Holy Spirit. There's like, there's no like there's some great ideas in it. There's some good knowledge, but it's, it's not, it's not that exp, uh, um, experiential knowledge of the Holy spirit and the, and the spirit bears witness with, with it all. You have a peace in your spirit about it. So that was your red flag is you just had a, a some sort of discontent or something that wasn't peaceful. Yeah. Was that some red flag? Yeah. I always go off of that, but you have to understand too, that the different levels that people are walking right. in, Right. Um, like when, I, when I got born again and I came out of witchcraft, if somebody lit an incense around me, I'm it's from, that's, Hey, you got to turn, you got to put that out. That's witchcraft. We used to summon demons with witchcraft. And so we would see something like that, which in the scriptures, we look, looking at incense or you mentioned crystals and things like that. That's all throughout the Bible. And the, the, right. the you know, the priests used them and the prophets and they use all this kind of stuff for good. And those are just two examples of things that we've given over to the new age incense right. and crystals, which are all throughout the Old Testament, all throughout the Bible. And they're beautiful. So I, I feel like we should take those back, understand why they use them and even just what it represents biblically as well. And uh, take that stuff back, you know? 
Amen for a good Christianese there. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan so, is amens and hallelujahs. I don't know. God, man. Hey, <laughs> my paradigm. <laughs> no, I, I love what you're saying. And we're, we're right on with that because I, I am sick and tired of the enemy having all the power and authority just because the Christians are afraid. And I think fear is the biggest thing that keeps us from stepping in. Yeah. And yet, uh, you know, Luke 10, 19, Jesus says that we have all power and authority over the enemy. And he really has no power or authority over us other than what we give him. Yeah. And so I want to walk in that. I do walk in that. And so we're teaching others how to walk in that so that they don't need to be afraid. You know, when a spirit of fear comes on you, even if it's something that, you know, it's, um, you know, maybe it's a warning, but yeah. it shouldn't bring necessarily a spirit of fear on you. And if it does, it's like, man that it's it's a trigger where you know maybe the holy spirit gave you an unction but then you got triggered in whatever it is that he's warning you yeah. about open up the door to fear fear comes in you agree with it and now he's having a heyday with you yeah. so you know for me we go into the courts we go into the courts of heaven and for me i just immediately say i repent for coming into agreement with that jesus can you rip up that contract and you know disintegrate it with your blood and get it out of my out of my existence so I can walk forward because there's really no power or authority that the enemy has over me. So, you know, my, my, my word and the place that I would like to get people is to where we're not operating out of fear anymore. We can step into those realms. I don't want to play with the enemy, but Hey, that was not yours to take in the first place. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's take it back. But honestly, I don't know. I could take those crystals back. I could take those things back and I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> So, you know, and it's and it's honestly, for the most part, those who have been in the occult and the other other things that know how to use them. But now how do we redeem them? So yeah. do you have any, yeah. any answers to that? How do we redeem some of that stuff? And well, I, I believe I believe that, you know, a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, it holds, you know, um, spiritual technologies, spiritual sciences. And so, I mean you know, to break down the crystals or whatever, you know, there's, you can watch documentaries from, you know, the military showing you how crystals generate energy and generate power. And, and if you was to break open your, you know, your, um, your stereo system, there's the little quartz crystal in there to tune into the frequency of the channels. And we used to do that. We get them and take the little crystals out when we were kids, tearing stuff up. But, um, you understand crystal technology and then we, we look in the Bible and see how crystals were used. And so the, uh, the priest would have these different crystals and gems and, 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 and things like that. And they would put them on the, um, the ephod and there was one that represented each tribe and they, and, and these crystals supposedly, uh, they say that changes your vibration, changes the way that you feel. Um, and, and so the priest would put them on the ephod and they would get them in a place where they can go in and commune with God. And then we see that we see that with the ephod, we see the crown that the kings would wear. And that's a that's pretty much an ephod for the head. It would have the rupees and the gems going around the, the head. And then you would have the magical wand or the scepter, which is an extension of the nervous system through the hand that had the crystals on the ends and things like that. So. We look at that stuff and then we see it being used throughout the Bible. And there's so much of that stuff um, with the incense. The priest would would pray and they would believe that, you know, they believed that the, the incense as it was carried up to heaven was carrying their prayers um, to heaven. You know, you know, I don't I don't know if we have to believe that, but definitely symbolic. It was definitely ours. It was definitely Hebraic, uh, or, you know, early Christian as well. So to just give, give these things up, to give the trance state up, you know, and the Bible is talks about the trance state and, and meditation and going into the deeper realms of the spirit and things like that. And just to give it up just because we don't fully understand it. And uh, all we need is, is Christ crucified and we don't need any of that spiritual stuff. Uh, we, we were talking about, you know, the enemy, we're talking about the demons and the power and authority that these people, these witches have and things like that. They have a power and authority and they have these tools they can prophesy, they can speak in tongues, they can go into trance and dream state and actual, tra actual travel and all that stuff, but it's a manipulation of what the Lord has given us. There, there's, there's tools that the Lord has given us, which are the weapons of our warfare, which are spiritual tools, and we have to learn how to use them and not just give them up. And, and there's, there's so many people who have in Christendom, but I think there's an awakening definitely happening um, I think that's why, you know, a lot of people are resonating with my work, whether it's people who got into the new age 
and they're trying to get some understanding because they have let go of Christ in the midst of that journey. And then there's people m- maybe who, who deal with you guys who are like in the church, but they're asking the deeper questions. They're not getting any answers, anything spiritual. They're told that it's demonic and that's simply not the case. Well, and I think a good part of those people, I mean, there's a, obviously a variety of reasons, but I think a good part of those people that, um, you know, start going down some of those paths and it takes them away from Christ and they, they you know, end up denouncing Christ, you know, yeah. partly because of the deception that once they get into it, they're told that Christ is of no value or whatever. But, yeah. but, but had the church taught them correctly that these things are, you know, available to us, we just need to figure out how to redeem them and begin to work in them. Because I believe that uh, I haven't had an opportunity yet, but I would love to have an opportunity to encounter a, you know, new age or, you know, a cult person who's open to discussion and just talk about, you know, you're, you're doing some stuff. You've got some power and authority there, but do you want the full power and authority? Do you want to go through mm-hmm. the door that it enables you to, to go further, faster than you could ever do with what you're dealing exactly. with now? Because you got a lot of restrictions in what you're doing now. You get into through Jesus as the door. Yeah, there's some protocol and so forth, but God's all about freedom. And as we <laughs> learn his character and start working out of love, man, it is, it's great. It's fun. <laughs> so, so two things come to mind. One is that a lot of the um, people who are spiritists and ceremonialists and, uh, you know, all the new age terminology that they use. I find that there's often church wounding, that they yeah. they were brought up in a church and something happened that, you know, broke their trust or um, some sort of wounding. And they said, no more. I, I this this can't be a true God if they would let he would let this happen. Yeah. Right. So so there's there's a, a healing that we have to have. And I believe that there's probably um, some reconciliation for those people. And I don't know if it needs to happen at the same time or even before we could even invite them into a a relationship with the true Lord Jesus. Right. Yeah. So, so tell us about the, the people that you've, um, walked through this journey and and maybe you have a testimony of someone that you could thinking that, yeah you know, how yeah. were they before and, and what conversation did you have that changed their mind i can i i mean there, there's so many now i literally get emails daily from mm-hmm. people and it blows my mind and um i used to try to save them all like i like early on i would save all the comments and all the beautiful words wow. that i would get from people because sometimes you fall upon you know troubling times or you you know yeah. you're you're in, you're in a, a battle and depression hits you and you're like, man, what am I even doing? And yeah. maybe everybody's right. Maybe I'm, you know, this, or maybe I should give up, go back and read those, those, uh, you know, comments and, 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 and things like that. It, it, it helps you. I mean, that's yeah. why the children of Israel made monuments and mm-hmm. built statues and things like that. So they can look back on it and say, you know what? I thought about giving up, but that statue right there represents the time the Lord God defeated our enemies when there was no other way out. He right. saved us. And we built that monument. Do you guys remember it? And so we have these these comments and these different things we can look back on our lives. And uh, and it just reminds us, though, of what, you know, God is doing in our in our midst. And, and he's called us to this thing. And um, I got so many of those. Like I said, I get them every day. But I guess we can um, talk about I have, I have two that I like. So one is is just a, a general thing. So I, 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 inter- I interview a lot of um new agers. I interview a lot of spiritualists, uh, abductees, anything. I, I just want to have the conversation. The key thing is there's just to have a conversation. Now mm-hmm. I'm tactful. I'm that's, I'm, that's my ministry. I'm ministry minded, but I don't have to cut them off. I don't have to say, Hey, you said that, but this is right. Sometimes I will. I try not to, I try to win them over, at least win their, their audience over and try not to be this you know, bigoted Christian who they're all expecting me to be. Yeah. Uh, I just try to have that conversation, but so I have um, somebody like Jordan Maxwell on, who's a, a big name in the uh, in the occult circle and, and teaching, um, uh, you know, hidden symbols and things like that. He's been doing it since I was a kid, really. So I've had the opportunity to have him on my show a couple of times and uh, talk to him. And he's a really good guy to talk to off the air and stuff like that and have him on. And um, 
we'll, we'll do a podcast and then, you know, we'll talk about whatever. Um, I'll get him off the air and then I'll pray. I said, okay, I want to pray for anybody who's going through a, a rough time. Anybody who's just seeking, seeking, seeking. We've even, you know, kind of likened the whole seek and pursuit of knowledge as vexation of spirit, knowledge without the Lord and just, just seeking knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It gets overwhelming. Uh, I mentioned that kind of stuff. And then I pray. And, and ask the Holy Spirit to just invade that he would awaken hearts and that he would draw all people into himself, maybe explain the gospel a little bit and just pray. And uh, I remember getting a comment from somebody who's watching a Jordan Maxwell video. Uh, he's thinking he's watching an interview about aliens and about the government or whatever we're talking about. I'm into that stuff. I like to discuss it. We're talking about that. And then here I go, we pray. And, and the Lord shows up and this guy's riding in a truck or sitting at home looking for truth. If you're watching a video like that, an hour, two hours in, you're looking for something. So they're looking for truth on this Jordan Maxwell video. Here's this random guy named Derek Truth Seeker, you know, and I pray and then the Holy Spirit invades him. The Lord, he has an encounter with God through a prayer on the, at the end of a Jordan Maxwell video or whoever the, the person is, whatever name you choose. They encounter God at the end of that podcast and it makes it all worth it. They, they said they get chills all over them and they just start crying and weeping. They message me. What is it, man? Tell me what I must do to be saved. I get the phone calls. Hey, I've been meditating. I do all the stuff you talk about. I'm in it. What do I need? I said, I want, want what you have because it's not really cutting it. Like the meditation is good. It's just it's, I'm missing something. I said, what's the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It's a relationship with Jesus. Are you ready? Do you really want it? Do you want to confess your sins and submit to Christ and live like he lived and follow after him? They yeah. say, yeah, pray with them over the phone, immediately get delivered of pill addiction. All and it, it, The Holy Spirit invades them. They start crying and weeping and shaking where they can't even talk. And it's those times I'm like, okay, it's all worth it. All the scrutiny, all the backbiting, all the be careful, you know, all this kind of stuff and all the abandonment and friends and things like that. It comes with the territory. You know, people do have to kind of, you know, I don't blame anybody, you know, for pointing fingers and stuff. You should, but um, it makes it all worth it, you know, and I've been able to, and, and that's just two stories. And I swear I have so many more. And it's just like, just to let them know, like you said, it was church hurt. It was that, um, you know, my dad was a pastor, but, or, so I'm just like, let me represent Jesus to you. Let me represent Jesus for you. You've had a, a bad, you've, you've had a misrepresentation of Christ. Cause I really believe that if you see him for who he truly is, I don't, I don't see how anybody could, could, could just walk away and not be changed, man. I don't see it. Um, and, and, and that's what I believe. And that's what my faith and, and, you know, my, my belief and, and that's what I do. And that's why I do it. And I, I present Jesus that way. And, uh, you know, we're seeing miracles, man. We're seeing lives transformed and stuff by me taking a risk and putting my neck out there. Now it's cool. Now I've got a successful podcast and great music and meditations and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's something to attain to what people would look at, but it's not easy, man. It's hard because it is, it's a ministry, even though it may not seem like it, even though it's, you know, oh, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, the thing is, you're. Uh, well, I've had several discussions with people uh, in the last week or two, and you know, I've talked about having you come on, and it's like, you know, this guy is reaching people that, uh, you know, the rest of us, you know, we don't have that calling, and somebody's got to reach out, and you know, yeah. for a lot of for a lot of other people, it could be a scary thing to encounter somebody and not know what to do, but um, you're just diving in, and and I, I love the fact again that you're. I don't really see that you're apologetic. You just dive in and you do what you feel Holy Spirit's calling you to do. You will use the language that he's calling you to use, whether it's Christianese or, you know, uh, whatever, you know, it all. It's all his. you got them both. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know the other language, you know, it, it, I'll, I'll even admit that, you know, when I hear the word chakras, I'm like, Ooh, okay, wait a minute. I know it's, I know it's okay. <laughs> I, you know, I would love to uh, learn more about them because I, I, I do understand that, you know, when I put my hands out to pray, you know, there's something here, you know, why do we do that? There's something there. We bow our heads. There's something there. You know, we want to open up, you know, there's there, it's, there's something there. We all know and feel it. It's just some people aren't in a position where they're willing to admit it. You know? mm -hmm. and, and we don't want to go any deeper to understand, well, what is that? But there's something there. And to begin to understand what is the 
uh, you know, the spiritual aspect of all that, uh, I, I think there's, there's benefit to that. There's gain to that. If we would be willing to, to go there. And well, at, at the same time, even if there isn't infiltrate, <laughs> why, why is serpent harm, harmless as doves if the chakras don't exist i don't know i can't prove them uh it's i mean there's a beauty it's a beautiful concept especially about you know our lives and the different areas of our lives making sure that every area of our life is lined up in flow none of it's out of whack every area and then you're gonna have flow that's that's a principle we can we, we can walk in so if it's real that's i good. don't know but guess what i'm gonna infiltrate it and i'm gonna <laughs> Because those are the people who are looking for truth. I'm I tired love of that. For the choir, man. I, I did it for years doing Christian evangelism. And I used to be a gospel rapper and I would travel to churches and share my testimony and they would pay me and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, it, I felt like I was preaching to the choir and then it would get to points where I would share my stories of demons and demonic possession. And I've got a bunch, even from the, from the Christian side. And then I would, I would be asked not to talk about demons and, we would go to like a uh, teen challenge, teen challenge. And I would go there and minister. And this is a, a group of, a group of men, a men's home where they were all dealing with uh, drug addiction, coming off of crack cocaine, heroin, all, the, you know what I'm saying? Methamphetamine, pill addiction, all of this stuff. They're bound up getting off of it. And I would go there and tell my testimony and speak about demons and things like that. And they would ask me not to talk about demons because those guys aren't ready for it. Like, hold on. That's one Oh one. We have to get rid of the demons, <laughs> you know? And, uh, yeah. So I just kind of, you know, you, you, you create it, man. The Lord's given, given you the vision. Um, you know, a lot of people are, they, they think it comes with a, a, a position at a church. I think a lot of us are waiting for a pulpit and a microphone, you know, before we can start ministry and be called into ministry. That's just some weird facade. That's maybe, not even commute it's communicated you know what i'm saying verbally by people like, hey you're gonna be a pastor you're gonna be a youth leader you're gonna be this but you know when when you understand that ministry is every moment and every day that you wake up and you put your feet on the floor and you wake up that your, your ministry started you don't need a microphone yeah. you don't need that kind of stuff and yeah. you know i, I, I do. found out man that um it, that's not what it's about so yeah. like my whole thing in the, in the church realm and stuff came from of just coming from that crazy background, right? Demons and going into trances and sucked in. And I'm free now. I'm in Christ. I want to tell you about it. And then we would tell people what well, we have people tell us to, you know, not to talk about that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, that it, tell us that it wasn't real and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, it just, I don't know, man, it's, um, you know, you, you, you create it, whatever, whatever it is that the Lord's given you, you have to be faithful with it. And it's something that, you know, the Lord's been, I'm saying working to me for a long time. I'm just grateful to be a part of it, you know? All right. So switching gears just a little bit, is there a message that, that you feel like the father's just put on your heart for this season, whatever this season is that you really, really want people to get and understand? Is there, is there anything that he really has resonated in you? Man, honestly, the subjects that I, that the Lord's given me, it, there's just so many to just like sum it up. Like, Hey, this is it. <laughs> it really is. I, I can't, I can sum up everything and just Absolutely. say studying the, the spirit realm, studying, even if it's just through the scriptures, you don't have to do any types of uh, outside studying or looking in or watching videos just within the scripture. It's so deep and it's so beautiful for understanding that how uh, the spirit realm affects us and how we affect it and, and our, you know, the song and dance there, the lower level entities or strongholds, the demons and things like that, and how they get a hold of our lives. And so understanding that and asking, you know, the father just to illuminate your hearts and show you what role you play in that. I mean, that's, that's the innocence of everything that I've, that I'm into is coming from where do we fit in, in this song and dance with God Jesus, Satan, the devil, entities, principalities, powers, dominions, rulers. What's going on here? So trying to trying to figure that out within the scriptures, man. Um, there's an innocence there, and it, but it's it's beautiful. And I've given my life to, to to you know what I'm saying to understand that. And um, I've had a lot of encounters and and um, you know seen a lot of people set free. It there because it, it imparts a faith in action. All of this stuff, man. Whether it's you know, I remember like looking up stuff about the third eye years ago and 
visualizing things, you know, and stuff like that. And we would be in prayer. And I remember seeing it happen. Okay. See this person healed, see them, see their hands moving, see that sickness leaving and see it happening. Mm -hmm. And you, we, we talked about, you know, the law of attraction and things like that, how they have some leeway like that. I, I practice the law of attraction in the spirit realm. When I call, when I call someone on the phone who needs prayer, I'm expecting them to be healed. There's a level of expectation that I'm going to walk in. I don't do it for cars and parking spots and all the little weird <laughs> stuff that they would show you in the secret, but I'm using the, you know what I'm saying? The law of, um, of, of faith of, you know what I'm saying? Believing in what, mm -hmm. what we can call the placebo effect. If we believe it, we shall receive it. And I'm expecting you to be healed. I'm seeing it in my mind's eye and I'm good. We're going to do it. We're going to believe it. We're two or more are gathered. And I've seen my, 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 my prayer life take off. I've seen so many more healings. I started to believe it and just take God at his word that it was real yeah. and, and, and find out how we can apply it to our lives uh, in and throughout the scripture, because I don't want nothing new the new age, whatever, anything new. I want a revival. I, I don't want nothing more or anything less than Christ and the disciples had. If, if they had, if they understood it and they knew it and they walked in power and that's why they were seeing miracles. That's why they were, you know, demons cast out in the streets and things like that. I, I believe, I believe we can walk in that too. Absolutely. Yeah. The scripture, you know, says that Jesus himself said that we would do greater things than he would do. And, um, and, and thus far, I haven't seen too many people that are doing the things that he did, let alone to do more. So we know there's a lot more to come. The thing is, we've got to up our faith. We have to begin to believe that we can actually do the things that he did and the greater things. But to me, you know, we teach the three plumb lines and the third plumb line is ask the father. So we don't I don't believe necessarily in just going out and doing whatever I feel like doing, <clears throat> because if Jesus is my example and he never did anything without going to the father to see what the father was doing, well, I'm going to, I want to follow that too. You know, are we becoming mature sons? Absolutely. But, you know, Jesus again is my example. And he, while he was here, never did anything without, you know, going to the father first. So, you know, but how do you do that? Now that means we got to ascend into the heavens to see what he's doing. And most churches, most people, they really don't know what that means or how to do that. They're, a lot of them are locked into that one-way conversation where they're just bringing their checklist and hoping that they can get some of the things off their checklist. But that's not intimacy. That's not an, you know, in an, yeah. entering into a place where you build an intimate relationship with him where sometimes we go up and um, he just wants to hang out in the garden and you know, do some things that just draw us into his, his love. And I think that's one of the most powerful things that we can do. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to, um, find out, you know, you, you mentioned your, uh, the demonic, uh, things that happened to you before, but you're free now. So do you have angelic and other spirit being encounters and, um, how yeah. does that go? <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Like uh, you know, all all of this stuff where like um it's all it's all been beautiful on the on this side as far as my encounters. Like I haven't had to I mean, on the other side. Now obviously we trials and tribulations and things that we go through aren't all all beautiful, you know, but if but um but if we know that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, then everything's gonna be okay. The Father has us. James four seven, submit yourselves to God resist the devil and he will flee to make sure that we're submitted to God on every level, every area, any of the stuff, whatever, anything that you're doing, you should submit it to the father. You should make sure it's the father doing it. So, and that's what I tell people as far as like, they want to, you know, astral project or they want to do all this crazy stuff in the spirit. I can't tell you to do or not do. I say, submit yourself to God. If the father lets you then do it. Tell me what happens, but you have to go to the father for that. He's I'm, I'm hoping that he, he shows you some really cool stuff. And um, I've seen things that um, I've, I've been privileged to, to, to see angelic beings. And I've been, I even say that, I mean, that's a privilege, but I've been privileged to see the demons. I've been privileged to, I guess at this point, looking back, I'm thankful for the, you know, the dark side that I walked in. I'm thankful that I've, got to see that that was real. And I understand that it's not a game and I understand that you have to be careful and things like that. So, um, yeah, when, whenever you do tap into the other realm, 
you can you can see spirits and me and me and Gil talked uh, when we talked a couple weeks ago about how like when you do spend that time in meditation or in the astral realms when you go in even you know you ask the Holy Spirit to take you guide me show me I just don't want to travel aimlessly or fly through heavens or whatever show me what what I don't want to waste time. Like if you, if there's a message that I need, if there are angels that are, that, that I am to, to meet or are spirits that are supposed to bring me stuff, which are all throughout the scriptures, you know, all types of spirits, spirits of even love, peace, joy, all of these types of spirits as well. And these different, we talk about vibrations as a new age term where you can feel it. And it's a, that whole vibration, that's an essence that we walk in. And those are spirits that we yeah. tap into. So, um, I've I've seen I mean I don't want to you know brag or anything like that but I've 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 seen a lot of um you know angelic figures I've seen them manifest in the, in the physical realm you know I've seen demons manifest I've yeah. seen literally appear and knock people down and um and I've seen angels in 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 you know the sky open up and you know balls of light come out the sky and fly into constellations and the Lord communicate with me and allow me to see these things through fasting and prayer and um but as far as when i tap in i don't there's no fear of being possessed there's no fear right. of what if um early on there was you know you would you didn't want nothing bad to happen but i'm just the lord gave me the scripture that um um if you ask your father for a fish he's not going to give you a serpent if you ask your father for a loaf of bread he's not going to give you a so, and that, that's a universal principle. So when we go into the spirit realm, when we enter that state of meditation and prayer, guided by the Holy Spirit, don't go in without it. You're a fool if you do. You're a fool if you go to, to Walmart without being guided by the Holy Spirit. Everything that you do, should, you should be led to the Father. Like Jesus said, I do nothing without, unless I see the Father doing it. Everything comes out of that relationship. Every single thing. Um, so even though we can talk about this stuff openly, it still comes back to, the father leading me and guiding me through the, right. through, through the Holy spirit. Because if I do encounter something that I'm not supposed to be there, or I do get a check in my spirit. Um, other, some people, you know, do deal with uh, those lower entities. And what I was trying to get, get to me and you talked about that when you're, if you're living a life of sin and, and you, you may not know the Lord even, and you tap into the spirit realm, you may have to deal with those spirits that you're entertaining Right. And, and for me, as a, as a young man, like when I, with all that witchcraft and stuff that I was doing, I was robbing people. I was stealing uh, all my witchcraft books. We had 40, 50 witchcraft books. I didn't pay for one of them. We stole them all. So there's this weird energy that you're stealing and stuff. And then you tap into the spirit realm and you're going to get to see that the types of entities that you're entertaining, they're hanging around you. You're going to parties, you're getting drunk, you're doing drugs. Oh, now you're tapping in. Hey, here we are. You're going to get possessed. You're going to get to see that stuff and it's going to freak you out. It's the same way when you're living a life of, 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 of prayer, a life of devotion. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you're doing good deeds, you're doing good alms before the Father, and you tap into the spirit realm, he has mighty things to show you, things that you do not know and cannot find out, only through him. I That's really good. believe Jeremiah 33, 3, man, that, he, yeah. that the Father has things that he hasn't shown anyone yet. And if you yeah. will you know, give yourself over to prayer and devotion that he'll share some of those secrets with you. I really believe that. Amen. That's great. That's great. So we got about five to seven minutes here. Um, you've got, like you said, a podcast, you've got uh, Facebook. Tell us a little bit about what you've got, what you're doing and how people can connect with you. Definitely. So if, uh, if, you know, if you want to check into my work or my music, uh, you can go to truthseeker.com, truth, S-E-E-K-A-H.com. Um, all of my stuff's there, my music, my podcast, and uh, some of my videos I've, that I've made. I've got some presentations and stuff like that that I've put out and um, have some different meditations and stuff, too. And I want to say this. Um, I have one that I shared with you. I'm going to go as soon as we get off of here. That's been a, a, a paid download. I'm going to open that up for free to people. So that'll be on that'll be on my YouTube as well. So oh, it's, wow. it's, it's wow. the throne room um, guided meditation. It's a visualization. I hired voice actors and people uh, to come in and say hello to you and, and people who played the roles of angels. And it was really so it was like was, a guided meditation. I was able to tap in and download the father's heart and ask him what, wow. what he would say. And it was just a whole new level of prophecy of like, you know, we do prophetic ministry for one person and give words of knowledge and whatever the Lord tells us. But just to be able to go into the, this was the first one that I did. 
And I was able to tap in and say, okay, father, what would you say now that they're here? We've gotten them on this, this journey through the mind into the astral realms. What would you say? What would you say to them? Tell them I love them. Tell them that even though the world's against them, I've, I've brought them here for this very minute. Now I'll give them a wave of my, my mercy, a wave of my love, a wave of my grace. And so I want to share that with everybody. That's going to be free. If you go to uh, trueseeker.com or if you go to my YouTube, it's the throne room visualization meditation. So I'm going to put that out there. Wow. For Thank you so much. That sounds Absolutely. exciting. I'm going to do it. That'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually did listen to that. It was it, I, very, very good. My wife does uh, has Meditate on Me. It's an app on, I think it's Android. It's also online. It's not on um, um, uh, an iPhone, yeah. but uh, it's on everything else. But uh, she does guided meditations, Christian meditations. And so yours, yours just kind of takes it to another level with all the, the different actors and voices. <laughs> and it's, it's very Man, good. I'll tell you what, man. So like even that, you know, into the new age movement. And so, hey, here's a guided meditation, a throne room or whatever. That one really is, is, is really, you know what I'm saying? But, um, as far as the references in there, it takes you through a, a, a journey of the uh, tabernacle of Moses. So it shows you the, you know, the Holy of Holies, the, you know, the, uh, the golden lamp stand, all of the, the showbread and all that kind of stuff. And so you're being explained that. But when I promote it, I'm promoting it to the spiritual community. And then so they're going through this guided meditation. They don't know what it is. And then they're, they're being brought to the throne of grace, to mm-hmm. God's throne. And he's like, hey, why you been running? I'm here. Yeah. And they're encountering God and they, th- they, yeah. they don't know what they're doing. And the testimonies I'm getting from people, they're just like coming back in tears and transformed. And it's just insane. Yeah. God is so good. The way yeah. where he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise man, you know, it's so good. Yeah. I love your heart for them. That's my heart too. You know, I, I just, um, I learned their language so that I could, talk to them you know and and draw them in and have a rapport so i love that that you do it too so that's awesome yeah so derek what would you say um and we we got just a couple minutes here i don't know if you have anything short to say but on, on this that um somebody who maybe got into this a little later and heard you talking about the the astro projection and all that and um if they, you know, cause there's a lot of people that just immediately they're triggered in fear that we're yeah. going into the demonic, we're being deceived, yeah. all that stuff. Would you have a, anything to say to them that would, that would maybe help them or, or what would you say? Yeah. I, again, like I would say, anybody who is trying to get into anything like this, especially the, the Christian ministries, like you have to be careful. Cause once you start sp- speaking on this stuff, you're gonna, I, I'm, I still hear you know, gossip from third parties of friends that I haven't heard from in years. And they've seen one video where I had a UFO guy on or something and they just won't talk to you. You have to be careful, but you have to know that whatever realm you're in, the Lord's called you to it. And if he's called, if he brought you to it, he'll bring you through it, give you everything you need. But um, really it's, it's about souls at the end of the day. It's about just whatever, you know, we always hear about, you know, what we're supposed to do with our life. What is our ministry? Where, where are we going to go? And I know so many people, man, who hear the voice of the father and he calls them back to the same thing that he took them out of. He takes yeah. them out of there. He cleans them up and he throws them back to go, to go reach those same people. I know right. people that he's brought out of homosexuality. They go to the gay bars and win people, people that just called out of uh, people in, in, in places of business. They go and they win, they win people on the business level. People in the slums. I know people in the, who do gospel rap and they go to the ghetto. They go to the drug infested neighborhoods and they bring the gospel. I go to the new age circles and I bring Christ. And um, so that's what it's about. It's about, you know, what, what, whatever the Lord's given you representing Christ there, whatever it is. So here's, here's a vision that the father gave me, I don't know, four or five years ago. And that, that was just that Jesus came to me and he says, it's time to go to battle. And I want everybody who's on my side, to get behind me. We're going to make our battle lines. Here's So get behind me if you're with me. And if you're not, you're going on the side of the enemy. And then the, he said, now look around. Who's be, who's with me? And so, you know, that's the our first plumb line is uh, the cross of Christ. And that is, you know, if you and I are on the same journey that we believe Yeshua is the only way to eternal life and to the Father, you know, we're on the same journey then. And then after that, we need to love, honor, and respect one another and understand that we're with Jesus. We're going to be on that battle line behind him. And the thing is, you are reaching people that, you know, a lot of the people that are listening uh, won't reach, won't be able to reach. It's not what they're called to reach. 
So, you know, you're in your lane and you're doing it very well. And so I just want to bless you in that and, you, and just encourage you to keep going. Don't stop. Just keep going after those people. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, there really is nothing to fear. Um, if you're doing what God has called you to do, you just keep stepping into it and taking the next steps. So just, I, I do, I love you, man. I love what you're doing and I honor you and bless you. And uh, if people know people who need what uh, uh, Derek has, yeah, yeah. get him over to the website. Because someone had just mentioned Adam, Adam uh, Starseed. I gotta, I gotta get to know Adam. I've seen him on a few different <laughs> things. Brother. I gotta get to know him. Maybe we'll have him on the show sometime. But uh, he's uh, um, been, you know, just rooting for you the whole way through and <laughs> talking about your podcast that you have on Wednesday nights. I guess that uh, people want to come on for prayer. Is that okay? Yeah, we do that too. So we we open up on uh, on Wednesday nights. I, so I do my podcast Tuesdays and Thursdays, ten a.m. Central, and then uh, Wednesday nights we open up for prayer. So we have a community of people uh, uh, that that we're you know involved with online and in person as well. And um, you know we do life together. So there's a whole bunch of these people who are just displaced, man, all over the world. So we have a community there. We do prayer online and we open the phone lines and take prayers and things like that for, for people. So, you know, That's this so kind of, it's funny because I go in as a sheep in wolf's clothing, but then I like tell you what I'm doing anyway. And I don't care. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah. there's a or, confidence. Or do you mean a wolf in sheep's clothing? No, no, no. no. I think I'm he, a sheep in wolf's clothing. Oh, sheep wolf's the other way around. Okay, got <laughs> it. Got it. it. <laughs> I know. I, know. Yeah, I got you it. Got <laughs> That's good. You tried to get me now. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I go in, I go in like that, mission minded, but then I just kind of blow the cover, say, look, man, it's it's all about Jesus. I don't care what you heard. And I'm gonna show you, like, this is the true spiritual authority. This is what you're looking for. And yeah. you can play in those realms as long as you want. But uh when you're when you're ready to come home, when you're ready to shut those doors and, and get free, then I'm here for you. And I'm gonna walk with you wherever you are. And I believe that's what Christ did, man. That's what we're called to do. So thank y'all for having me on, man. And uh, knowing that you're kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess rolling the dice to have me on. And I'm pretty sure you got messages <laughs> in your inbox. And I know, I know how those conversations go. So I, I was everyone. never worried. I, I'm, I'm not worried about it because uh, I, you know, if it ruffles a few feathers and it gives me opportunity to share with people, cause you know, we got to get rid of our, our, our Christian baggage that uh, keeps drawing up walls. We got to yeah. understand that, you know, Jesus's first uh, commandment was to love one another, not to know more than somebody else and, and think that we got all the right stuff. And so we got to tell everybody else how to yeah. do it. No, it's to love one another and you're on Jesus Christ's side. And so yeah. you're on my side and I'm with you. So you may have a different calling and you're going down a different road and you're reaching different people. And the thing is, we all are. So uh, I just bless you. And it's like if the father connects us in a way that, um, you know, I'm supposed to help you in any way. Hallelujah. You may be you know, supposed to help me in a, in a specific way. Yeah. You know, it's just how we're, we're all connected. So let's just figure out how we're connected. Maybe, maybe some of it's a little bit further distance. Some of it's going to be really close, but we're all connected. Let's just love on one another and help each other accomplish the missions God has given us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for having me on. All right. Thank well, hang you. on here, Derek. I'm going to, we're going to sign off, but I want to talk to you a little bit more. So bless you, everyone. Thank you for being Bye. on. I hope you were blessed and make sure you send the people that need to hear uh, the truth seeker. Let him know that you're out there. Bless you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.